Greetings and welcome to the Tuesday Morning Vodcast Podcast. There is a ghost in my pants. And it's fun to do that. <laughs> it's fun for me in editing. It's probably not fun for you. Guys, I'm going to jump right into something right now. It's going to shock the shit out of your asses. It's going to send a probe up there and go. <laughs> I woke up this morning uh, relatively early. I was up this morning and I was like, you know what? I can't get up. I'm really tired. It's 645. I'm going to go back to sleep. That was my first mistake. I just had... The worst fucking nightmare I've ever had in my entire life. Some people are scared of ghosts, goblins, werewolves, vampires, darkness, heights. There's a million things. The heights would be pretty terrifying for me too. But I have this dream and I keep fucking having this dream and it's not exactly the same. But I am always in a hotel. Um, I'm not always lost in, in every single dream, but the ones that are nightmares I'm lost in. And this was the worst of them. I had to write this down really quick, and there's a shitload to, to discuss here. So uh, buckle up, buckaroos, billy bumblers, and buckaroo bonsai, and get ready for the ride of your life, or at least the ride of your morning. I'm hoping it's better than your ride, your commute to work. Okay, so there, this is a huge hotel. I don't know where it is because the dream started out. It was me and my, my friend Corey and Nicole and my wife Carol, and we had to get to this hotel, but between this hotel and where we were, we were in this, like, it was nighttime on this old deserted street. There was a really rundown bar that looked like it was closed, and we could see the hotel from where we were. It almost felt like a, like a, like a desert Vegas type thing, not where it was super bright down the road, but there was like one hotel on this long deserted strip, but it wasn't a desert. It was, I don't know, something in between the desert and grasslands. We have a few minutes to check out. So Corey and Nicole are all packed up and ready to go. And we tell them, okay, we'll meet you back at your house. And um, so Carol and I grab a few things and we had to do something before we could pack up and leave. I think she wasn't feeling well. In, her, in the dream, she looked really red. And I remember commenting on her and being like, why are you, what's going on? Are you okay? She's like, no, nah, I need to go see somebody about this. I'm like, go, go. Because I knew there was a hospital in, in the building. I'm like, you go do that. I'll go pack up the room. And I remembered in the dream that I knew our room was either 69 or 369. Um, and I had the card in my pocket, but there was no indicator on, you know, saying which room it was. I don't know why. I start to head back to the room at this point. And that's when I start to, like, freak out because I'm like, how the hell do I get back to the room? There's a hospital in here. This is a giant hotel. So Carol goes to the hospital. I'm alone. And finally, I, I just, I see an open room and I feel like I know the person in there and I look in and it's Brian Reese and he's sleeping and there's a phone on his wall. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to call somebody. I'm going to call Carol at least see if I can get through to her. And I don't know why I didn't have my own cell phone. Maybe I left it up in the room and figure out why I can't figure out what room we're at, or at least find out the room number so I can go up because for some reason I knew I was there to film something. All my camera gear was there and I, I think like there was music gear there too for some reason so I, I go to take the phone off of his wall and the whole thing just comes off in my hand and I realize it's just a shell of a phone and Brian now is awake and he's looking at me he's like yeah that doesn't work I'm like you realize this isn't a real phone right he's like I don't know so he, he's helpless I mean he's 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 no help to me at all so I end up you know leaving him I end up going let's see where did I go next I remember the night before, Corey, Nicole, Brian, and Sarah, and a bunch of my friends from back home were in this giant room. It was a huge, like, it was an old warehouse once, but it was clearly converted to be like a ghetto lobby type thing, but there was no one in here when I go in here. For some reason, I'm feeling drawn to this room. It's it's very, like, golden and warm inside. Um, hugely spacious, though, so it's not cozy. Um, and it looks like it was either a factory or something at one point where they just tore stuff out and there are couches on one end. And I remember sitting on one couch and I'm thinking, oh, if I go down there for some reason, I think I'll remember where my room is. Um, but I go down there and I sit for a minute and it doesn't help. And then uh, I see something moving out of the corner of my eye and it freaks me out because like there isn't for some reason I know that there's no one or anything supposed to be in here. So 
I go back up the stairs because for some reason there's stairs and not an elevator or an escalator in here. And I walk up the stairs and finally I know there's something coming up behind me. And I turn around and it's my cat Luna. I'm like, oh my God, it's just Luna. But then I'm freaking out because like, why the fuck is my cat Luna here? Like I have to get him home so that he doesn't get hit by a car or eaten by a larger animal or something. So he kind of sticks with me at this point. He's just kind of like going up the stairs and then he gives up at one point and he disappears from the dream entirely. I don't know where he went. I don't know, maybe he saw a mouse or something. And one of the unexplainable things about the dream too was the mystery of time running out. Like I knew time was running out for me to check out of the hotel, but there was also time running out um, on something else. I don't know if it was supposedly my life or, or what was going on, but I knew that I had to get these things done. I had to get to my room. I had to pack up all my stuff and I needed to check out of the hotel. Um, and if I couldn't get those things done, time was going to run out for me, but not for those things. I mean, it was running out for those things as well, but something was causing my time to run out. I don't know if that mean I was going to die or, or, or people were going to come after me with sticks or something, but that was a, an aspect of the dream as well. Okay. So I'm still looking for my room at this point, but, but the dream itself, just to fill you guys in, there was definitely this sense, this idea that I was aware of the fact that they were, we were there for a gathering on vacation, but we were also trying to get away from something. I don't know if it was werewolves or if it was symbolically something, but either way, we were all there not just to have a grand old time, but to also um, get away from something. Maybe it was a storm we all had to get away from. I, I'm not sure. So finally, I bump into a random stranger with a, a, a group of people. There's like three or four people, and, and suddenly they're, they're very willing to help. They're like, they're taking a look. I, I reach into my opposite pocket, not the one that has the card, and for some reason, there's like a sheet of paper like that looks like the card for the room, but it looks like a Christmas card greeting as well. And he looks at it, he's like, oh, yeah, we can get you where you need to go. And so I'm following him and his two... I don't know who they are, friends, girlfriends, whatever they are. And he leads me across this terrace. And suddenly we're like, we're in New York, like on a skyscraper where there's this little balcony lounge. Not a little balcony, balcony. It's a pretty big balcony. Um, and we cross across it and there's some plants in front of the door. We go through the door. And um, I mean, my my panicking in the dream felt very realistic. Like there are dreams that you have that you're like, holy shit, I could have believed that was true. Just the panic alone in my dream was enough to wake me up at this point. And, and I shot out of bed. I was like, I do not want to accidentally fall back asleep and end up back in this dream again. Um, the stress from not being able to get back to the room in time to get our stuff packed so we can get out of the hotel and trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do with Luna at this point, because I can't just leave him. I was panicking, and I was overwhelmed in the dream, and I was very happy when I woke up. But the funny thing is, is that I have a lot of dreams about hotels. I don't know why. I don't know where it comes from. I don't know what it means. To be completely honest, I don't think dreams mean anything. I think there are magical forces in our universe. I do believe that. I think dreams are just all caught up memories and 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 information in your head throughout the day that sometimes decides to present itself during your sleep. Um, do I think there's a message to it? Probably not. But um, I, I have to say, this is this is a, a very oddly reoccurring dream because sometimes I do have reoccurring dreams. This is one about Hugh Laurie. He's trying to sell me his uh, mother's house. His mother has passed away. And um, oddly enough, uh, house, he's trying to sell me a house. Uh, and he's got this huge bodyguard with him. That's besides the point. The hotel dreams are the ones that are reoccurring. And I would say in the last like two years, I've had at least four to six of these dreams where I'm in either a, a giant hotel and something is stressful about the situation, or I'm in a hotel uh, or a cabin sometimes, and there are always bears around. Bears cabins and getting lost in hotels have been the synopsis of my dreams over the last like two years. I mean, they're peppered in there with other fun and interesting ones, but um, I hadn't dreamed or had a dream in, I'd say two or three months, at least not one I can remember. They, they say that you dream every night. I, I don't know who they are and I don't know how true that is uh, or how true that is or where that information comes from or who records that information or how they even test or study that. I wanted to share this with you because 
I haven't been so moved by a dream in so long that um, I just had to get it out. Like, I feel like if I had kept it in my head, I would have gone crazy today. It was really an unbelievably, overwhelmingly stressful dream. Like, I was, I was stressed when I woke up, and I had to... Um, I just had to get out of bed. I didn't want to go back to that world. It was it was terrifying to me. So, unfortunately, I don't have anything else to share with you this morning, so I have to leave it on that dour note. But I hope you guys are enjoying watching these as much as I'm loving making them. And if you are, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, and hit the little bell icon. And hit the little bell icon. It'll let you know every time I put out a new video. Don't forget to make somebody smile today and take care of each other out there. I'm Jason Oliver, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode of the Vodcast Podcast. Take care, and boy howdy. Ha, ha, ha.